Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides Patch Rundown. My name is Kristoff and today I'll be going over all the changes that were made in Patch 9.19. I'll cover all the details including a tier list for each role that was made by our challenger analysts and partnered pro players. Patch 9.19 is a massive patch. Since the World Championships will be played in 9.19, there are a ton of changes which raised a lot of questions. Is Riven going to once again be OP? Will Fiora be a must pick or ban champion? Is is Vayne finally making the push to S plus tier? Well, don't worry, we got you guys covered and we'll answer all these questions in the video. But remember, since the new patch just hit the live servers, please do keep in mind that most of these tier lists are purely predictions. We encourage all our viewers to comment on our lists and say if you agree or disagree with us on specific champion placements. Also, as a reminder, there will be an updated tier list one week into the patch where we use fresh statistics to give you guys the best and most accurate tier lists available. Before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out to Mike who recently climbed to Grandmasters after using our website Pro Guides. I also want to give a shout out to the three students who hit Master Tier last week after learning from our courses and receiving coaching from our website. These guys have been studying our guides super hard recently, and I'm proud of how much they've improved over the last month. Also guys, make sure to check out our brand new app for Pro Guides, which is available on iOS and Android. If you guys want to get better at League of Legends, just check out ProGuides.com. Now, with that being said, let's jump right into the video. First things first, there's going to be a few new skins which are joining us on the Rift this patch. We have Hextech Amumu, then we have Majestic Empress Morgana, next up we got Splendid Staff Nami, and then we have an amazing Valiant Sword Riven, and also the Prestige Edition Valiant Sword Riven as well. And finally, we have Championship Rise. These skins look so good, so make sure you guys have enough RP for them. All right, now on to the balance changes. So, starting off with the top lane, we have Fiora. Fiora has been receiving a ton of buffs within the past few patches and has held a really strong stance in the meta. In patch 9.19, Fiora is looking to receive some more buffs to her kit, which will make her a disgustingly strong top laner. Her Q lunge will now be able to proc on towers and wards. In addition to this, her E blade work can now critically strike towers for a massive amount of damage. Although these changes don't really add any combat strength to Fiora, she will now become one of the fastest and most dangerous split push threats in League of Legends. Combine these buffs with a Demolish Rune, a Tiamat, and a Triforce, and watch the enemy's tower plates just disappear. Her 1v1 is already super strong, and she can easily force the enemy to recall while you destroy multiple plates within a short amount of time to extend your lead even further. During the mid to late game, very few top laners can match Fiora in the 1v1, which makes her an even stronger pick. And because of all these changes for patch 9.19, Fiora will be placed in our S plus tier for the top lane. Mordekaiser has been one of the best top laners for the solo queue meta, but has struggled quite a bit in professional play. His abilities are just too easy to dodge for pro players, and purchasing a QSS can make him pretty useless during team fights. For this patch, Riot wants to give Mordekaiser a bit of love and make him slightly more viable for competitive play. His W, Indestructible, will have its damage to shield generation increase from 30% to 35%. Although this is a nice change, it will likely not affect Mordekaiser's stance in the meta. Instead of buffing the generation, it would have been really nice if the balance team could lower his long cooldowns instead. Mordekaiser will remain in the top lane S tier for this patch and will be a solid pick for solo queue. Aatrox received some heavy nerfs in patch 9.18, which have dropped his win rate by a huge amount. And I'm talking huge. He's pretty much become irrelevant in the meta and almost every pro player has removed him from their champion pool. In patch 9.19, the balance team are looking to give Aatrox some love and will buff his Q's damage to minions, which will be increased from 40% to 55%. This means that Aatrox will be able to clear minion waves much faster during the mid to late game, but he'll still struggle to keep up with the other top laners during the laning phase. Since these buffs are nowhere close to matching the nerfs he received in the previous patch, Aatrox will remain in our top lane B tier for patch 9.19. Ever since his rework, Orin has been somewhat of a forgotten champion and has struggled to keep up in the current meta. Although he's received some minor buffs within the past few months, they clearly were not enough to bring him back to his former glory. For patch 9.19, Orin will receive a buff to his passive Living Forge, which will lower the level required for Masterwork item upgrades from 13 to 12. Again, this is a minor change which will not affect his stance in the meta as a top laner, but it'll have more of an impact for his other roles like jungle and support. Orin will remain in our top lane C tier, but we'll see if he can make the push to B tier for our mid-patch update. 
When the Pantheon rework first hit the live servers, he felt like an extremely underwhelming champion who lacked damage and had terrible scaling. However, Pantheon has received a ton of buffs within the past few patches, which have actually pushed him into the S plus tier for top lane. His ability to win almost every 1v1 during the early to mid game makes him a standout OP top laner who was in need of some nerfs. For patch 9.19, Pantheon will have his base magic resist lowered from 32 to 28. In addition to this, his W shield vault will have its empowered attack damage changed from 150% AD to 135 to 165% AD depending on champion level. These changes are mainly focused around nerfing Pantheon's early game while also giving him slightly better scaling during the mid to late game. Pantheon will be dropped from our S plus tier into our S tier for top lane. And if you guys are interested in learning how to play the new Pantheon at the highest level, go find a coach on ProGuides.com and they'll show you all the ins and outs on how to win all your games with the new Pantheon. Riven received a few nerfs within the past few patches and has been doing decently in the meta. Her early game did become a lot more abusable due to her E cooldown nerfs, but it looks like things are about to change and Riven will become a must picker band champion for solo queue. Her E Valor will have its cooldown lowered from 14 to 10 seconds to 12 to 8 seconds. However, as compensation for the added mobility, her Q Broken Wings will have its cooldown increased by one second. Although the two second E buff doesn't seem like much, keep in mind that Riven is one of the only champions in the game who rushes 40 to 45 percent cdr and cutting that much time off this ability will make it close to a four second cooldown this means that her survivability during fights is increased by a ton and our analysts have decided to push her into the s tier for patch 9.19 so start practicing riven guys all right, now on to Scion. In the current meta, tanks such as Scion have been struggling to keep up with their bruisier counterparts due to how fast the games have become. Since most matches end within 25 minutes, this means that tanks could not reach their late game power spikes where they become nearly unkillable. Instead, they would just get abused by the mobility and damage from the other top laners during the laning phase and become pretty useless during the rest of the game. For patch 9.19, Scion will receive a buff to his W, Soul Furnace, which will have its shield strength increased from 30 to 130 to 50 to 150. This is a great change for Scion and it'll push him up into our top lane B tier. The top lane tier list for patch 9.19 sees a lot of changes. In our S plus tier, we have three members who are Kled, Fiora, and Jax. Jax has been on the brink of making that push to S plus tier for quite some time and has finally done so in patch 9.19. Once he purchases a Tiamat, Triforce, or Spear of Shoujin, he becomes almost unstoppable during his split pushing and his team fighting also becomes Becomes insane. If you miss Earth mode and want to play it again, then look no further and just play Spear of Shoujin Jax. It's close enough. Next up in our S tier, we have Darius, Renekton, Mordekaiser, Vladimir, Pantheon, and Riven. These six champions are some of the strongest top laners for solo queue and can bring you really good results in patch 9.19. Our analysts highly recommend you try out Riven and Vladimir this patch because they'll be really strong picks. Some notable A tier champions on our list are Kale and Akali. Kale received a mini rework and some minor buffs within the past few patches, and she's almost on the brink of making that push to S tier. However, due to her weak early game, Kale still remains in the A tier for now, but is a great pick for solo queue. Akali also received some buffs in patch 9.19, which have pushed her into our A tier for the top lane, but she'll likely remain unaffected for the mid lane. We'll go over these buffs during the mid lane section, so make sure to stay tuned. All right, now on to the jungle. First up is going to be Gragas. Gragas is one of the highest priority champions for competitive play and is receiving a nerf in patch 9.19. His W Drunken Rage will have its cooldown increased from 5 to 6 seconds and the damage on this ability has been lowered from 8% to 7% of the target's max HP. This is a very minor nerf which will affect him a tiny bit, but he'll likely still see play during the world championships. Gragas will remain in our jungle A tier and will continue to hold a stance in the meta. Ever since the jungle EXP nerfs, Graves has been struggling to keep up in the current meta. His hard farm playstyle was nerfed significantly, and the jungle meta favors champions who aggressively spam early ganks like Elise, Nunu, Vi, and J4. For patch 9.19, Graves will receive a few minor stat adjustments to his HP, base mana, and mana regen. In addition to this, his base AD will be increased from 66 to 68. This is a very minor buff, but it'll help out his early clear speed nonetheless. Graves will remain in our jungle B tier this patch. 
Rek'Sai has pretty much disappeared in the meta over the past few months, but has still been a decent jungler for solo queue. In order to bring her back for the World Championships, the balance team are looking to give her some decent buffs in patch 9.19. Firstly, her base armor will be increased from 33 to 36, and her Q Queen's Wrath will be able to proc on towers. These buffs are great for Rek'Sai, and she'll definitely see more play next week. Rek'Sai will be placed in our jungle A tier, but we'll see where she's at in our mid-patch update next week. If you guys want to watch that video, then click the sub button, and it'll show up right on your dashboard. Sejuani has received a ton of nerfs within the past few months, but is still one of the strongest junglers for competitive play. She's just way too reliable in the jungle for professional players, and it appears that Riot has decided to completely gut her from both competitive and solo queue in order to remove her from the meta entirely. Her passive, Fury of the North, will have its damage changed from 10 to 20% to 10% of the target's max HP at all ranks. This means that one of her main damage sources has been cut in half, and she'll be dropped into the jungle C tier as a result this patch. Despite receiving multiple nerfs within the past few patches, Silas Jungle has continued to become a problematic pick for competitive play and is being gutted this patch. The Riot Balance team are not a big fan of champions being OP in three different roles, and it appears that they want to remove him from the jungle completely. Firstly, his base armor will be lowered from 32 to 28, and his armor per level has been lowered from 3 to 2.5. In addition to this, his passive burst will have its damage changed from 9 to 60, with 100% of your AD and 20% of your AD AP to having the base damage completely removed, but increasing the AD scaling by 10%. In addition to this, Petrocyte Burst will now do much less damage to all other targets hit by this ability, including minions, monsters, and champions. This is a huge nerf towards Silas Jungle, which will also affect his stance as a mid laner and top laner as well. Having his armor and wave clear nerfed this much will pretty much make him unplayable versus AD champions. Since his E is primarily a magic shield, he will have almost no tools to combat against heavy AD burst champs like Zed and Talon. Silas will be removed from our jungle tier list for patch 9.19. Xin Zhao has held a solid stance in the meta and is receiving a few buffs this patch. Firstly, his passive Determination will have its base health restoration rate increased from 8 to 59 based on level to 10 to 78. In addition to this, his Q, 3 Talent Strike, will have its damage increased from 20 to 40 to 20 to 52. Although these buffs seem pretty minor, do not be fooled. Xin Zhao is a champion who can snowball his early game lead into the mid game and having his mid game buffed is actually pretty huge. Xin Zhao will be placed in our jungle a tier as a result. Zack has been a sleeper OP pick in the meta recently, but has seen very little play in solo queue and almost no play in competitive matches. His ultimate, Let's Bounce, will have its passive blob restore rate increased by an additional 1-3% to depending on the skill rank. This is a pretty small buff to his kit, so he'll be placed in our jungle A tier this patch. The jungle tier list remains pretty similar to the one we had previously. In our S plus tier, we have the same three members who are Kha'Zix, Evelyn, and Nunu. Evelyn received some huge buffs in patch 9.18, which have made her a must pick or ban champion. Her win rate in solo queue did drop by a small amount, but that's mainly due to players rushing into ranked games with her without actually taking the time to learn her. However, her win rate has been steadily increasing over the past few weeks, and her ban rate is at a record-breaking 35%. In our tier, we have Dr. Mundo, Elise, J4, Hecarim, Lee Sin, Karthus, and a new member, Echo. Echo received a ton of buffs recently, and he's so OP in the jungle right now. Our analysts are very confident that you'll see some Echo jungle during the World Championships, and he might even make that push to the S Plus tier within the next coming weeks. Make sure to click that sub button if you want to see the mid-patch update video next week. All right, now let's run it down mid. Oh, here we go again. Akali has been one of the most problematic champions when it comes to balance, and it looks like the balance team are taking another shot at her this patch. Her ultimate perfect execution will have its minimum damage increased from 65 to 215 to 85 to 215. This is just a revert of one of her previous nerfs, and it won't help her that much as a mid laner because the removal of the micro stun was huge. However, this buff does help her quite a bit in the top lane, where the micro stun was less needed. Akali will be placed in our mid lane C tier this patch as a result, but we'll see if she can dash her way into B tier next week. 
Annie received a mini rework on her E ability last patch, but it appears that the balance team overcompensated for the buffs and nerfed her a little bit too much. In patch 9.19, Annie's E, Molten Shield, will have its cooldown reverted from 15 seconds flat to 14 to 10 seconds. In addition to this, the movement speed bonus has been increased from 20 to 60% to 30 to 60%. This is a great buff for Annie mid, which will give her better engages and also she'll be able to kite enemies with ease. Annie will be placed in our mid lane B tier this patch, but we'll see if she can make that push to A tier in our mid patch update. Heimer has been a somewhat forgotten champion recently, but is now going to be getting some love from the balance team this patch. His Q evolution turret will have its AP ratio increased by 5%, and his E will have its stun duration buffed by 0.25 seconds. These changes are welcome for Heimer Dinger mains, but they won't magically make him an OP pick in the meta. Heimer will be placed in our mid lane C tier for patch 9.19. Oriana has held a solid stance in the meta recently, but the balance team plan on giving her some massive buffs to force her into the world championships. Her ultimate command shockwave will have its damage increased from 150 to 300, with 70% scaling, to 200 to 350, with 80% scaling. This is a huge buff to Oriana, and you'll definitely see her being played next week. Having that much extra damage on her ultimate will mean that she can pretty much pop anyone who gets hit by this ability, and our analysts believe that this was actually an over buff to her kit. For patch 9.19, Oriana will be placed in the mid lane A tier, but she can easily make that push to S tier if she didn't have so many hard counters in the meta. Champions like Fizz, Syndra, Zed, and Echo can abuse her pretty often in lane, which is preventing her from making that extra push. Twisted Fate is actually the best mid laner for solo queue, but has been placed in our A tier for multiple patches now, because only a handful of players in the world can play him optimally. A few that come to mind right off the bat are Dopa, 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 Apto, Dopa, and Dopa. So if your name wasn't listed here, then it means that you have a lot to learn when it comes to AP Twisted Fate. However, in patch 9.19, Riot Games are looking to buff a different style of TF, which focuses more on attack speed and attack damage. His E stack deck will have its attack speed increased from 10 to 30% to 20 to 40%. On top of that, the bonus damage on this ability has been increased from 55 to 155 to 65 to 165. These two buffs are really big for the on hit Twisted Fate build, and he will be placed in our mid lane S tier as a result. Vagar is one of the most annoying champions in the game right now, and he's being buffed significantly in patch 9.19. His E Event Horizon will have its cooldown lowered from 18 to 14 seconds to 18 to 12 seconds. This means that there will be a lot less opportunities to engage on Vagar during the mid to late game because his main peeling ability will be on such a short cooldown. This buff will help him out a ton in solo queue, but he'll likely not see competitive play too much due to his fragile early game. Vagar will be placed in our mid lane A tier. The mid lane tier list sees a decent amount of changes. In our S plus tier, we have the same two members who are Fizz and Talon. These two champions will bring you guys the best result when it comes to ranked games, so make sure to give them a try. In our S tier, we have Zed, Katarina, Malzahar, Ari, Kassadin, Echo, and a new member, Twisted Fate. TF is receiving some big buffs on his on-hit style, which will surely push him back into the S tier. Fnatic fans are going to love this buff because their mid laner Nemesis is very good at the on-hit style. In our A tier, we have some notable picks, which are Camille, Renekton, Kled, and Diana. With picks like Echo, Talon, Zed, and Fizz being played so much, you can easily pick a melee mid laner to match up against these guys and neutralize them during the laning phase. Also in our A tier, we welcome back a familiar face, Galio. Galio received a ton of buffs within the past few patches, and he's triumphantly returned into the mid lane tier list as a solid A tier champion. Congrats, Galio, it's been a long time. His damage is off the charts right now, and even players like Faker are spamming him in solo queue. We all know what happens when Faker gets his Superman style Galio, it's a little scary. Karma has been dropped into our D tier due to some nerfs made to her Q, and Silas has been dropped into our C tier for patch 9.19. All right, now on to the AD carries. Ash has been one of the most balanced AD carries in the meta recently, but it appears that the balance team are going to push her into the OP section with some buffs in patch 9.19. Her Q will now reset her auto attack, and the slow from her passive has been increased from 15 to 30% to 20 to 30%. This is a massive buff for Ash, which will increase her dueling potential significantly, her DPS, her self peel, and her overall power level. As a result, Ash will be placed in our AD carry S tier for patch 9.19, and she'll be a darn good solo queue pick, so make sure to pick her up. 
Vayne has also been a very strong AD carry within the past few months, but it looks like the balance team really want to force her into the World Championships meta. In patch 9.19, Vayne will have her ultimate's attack damage steroid buffed from 20 to 40 to 25 to 55. Again, this is a huge buff, but it won't make Vayne an S plus tier pick. Vayne will remain in our S tier for 9.19, but we'll see if that changes next week. The AD carry tier list remains pretty similar to the one we had previously due to there being very few balance changes this patch. In our S plus tier, we have the same three champions who are Jinx, Kai'Sa, and Caitlyn. These three picks will bring you the best results when it comes to ranked games, and you should learn a few of them this week. In our S tier, we have Jin, Lucian, Vayne, Zaya, Ash, and Draven. Our S tier picks are also great pickups for the patch, and our analysts recommend you start playing Vayne, Lucian, and Ash because they'll give you guys some easy free low in the bot lane. For the World Championships, you should expect to see a lot of Caitlyn, Kaisa, Lucian, Zaya, Bane, and Ezreal because they're common favorites amongst professional AD carries. Not much more to say about ADCs, so let's move on to supports. First up on the support balance changes, we have Blitzcrank. Blitzcrank will receive a buff to his Q, Rocket Grab, which will have its range increased from 1050 to 1150. In addition to this, his ultimate static field will have its max stacks increased from 2 to 3. If you're a support main and watching this video, then spam Blitzcrank as soon as these changes come out. The majority of players don't actually read patch notes, and the extra range will definitely catch them off guard. This will lead to many first bloods and easy wins because they are not adjusted to the new Blitzcrank Q. For patch 9.19, Blitzcrank will be placed into to the support S tier. Karma's been one of the most problematic picks when it comes to professional play due to her viability and dominance in the top lane. For patch 9.19, Karma's Q inner flame will have its AP ratio lowered by 20% on both the normal and Manta empowered versions. This nerf is mainly intended to gut Karma top lane, but it will affect her more as a mid and support than it will at all for her top lane role. Karma will be dropped into the support C tier for patch 9.19. Much like Karma, Tom Kench has also been one of the most problematic picks when it comes to pro play and is being nerfed significantly this patch. His E, Thick Skin, will have its health regeneration nerfed from 75% flat to 30 to 100% depending on the level. This means that Tom Kench's safety during the laning phase has been reduced by a ton and he will be placed in our support D tier for patch 9.19. Yumi's been one of the most annoying champions in the game recently and is being nerfed significantly next patch. Her Q will have its slow nerf from 20 to 80% to 20% flat at all ranks and the slow duration will be changed from 1.5 seconds to 1 second total. However, as a compensation, this slow amount will no longer decay but will remain a flat amount for the entire time. Yumi will be placed in our support B tier this patch. The support tier list sees a couple of changes in patch 9.19. In our S plus tier, we have the same three members who are Pike, Nautilus, and Leona. The current support meta really favors aggressive supports like these three, who can set up plays and also get 2v2 kills during the laning phase. In our S tier, we have Thresh, Morgana, Zyra, Nami, Bard, and Blitzcrank. These six champions are extremely good for solo queue and can also bring you similar results as our S plus tier picks. For A tier, we have one notable pick, which is going to be Swain. Although Swain's stats are really Really not the best at the moment, our analysts are predicting that we'll see a ton of Swain support during the World Championships meta. He is actually insanely strong right now, but we just haven't had enough time to optimize his playstyle since this new discovery. All right, that's it for patch 9.19. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, then please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to our channel to be notified for our next video. Make sure to check out our website for in-depth content and guides that were made by your favorite pro players. The second part of our meta-analysis video will be available next week, which will bring you the most accurate tier list available, so click that sub button if you want to see it. Thanks for watching, good luck in your next few games, and we'll see you on the Rift.